promised for hundreds of years, the ancient Chinese art of Tai Chi provides an answer to the stresses of 20th century living. Every martial art requires the means whereby mind and body are strengthened and coordinated to work calmly under all conditions. The slow movements of Tai Chi presented on this video meet that need. They also provide the foundation for the faster, more martial movements of Tai Chi. Dating back to the end of the 16th century, modern day Tai Chi was founded in China by the Chen family. They softened their initial hard style martial art with meditation and breathing techniques. Later generations of the Chen family modified the original leaping movements to form the Yang style of Tai Chi. It has become the most widely practiced form of Tai Chi in the world today and is the style that you will be studying on this video. Your teacher is Master Earl Montague. He is the only Westerner to be accorded the degree of Master, an honor conferred upon him in 1985 by Master Wang Xin Wu after Earl performed in the Chinese martial arts tournament at Ningxia in China. Earl Montague began teaching in London in 1977. He has taught in Kowloon Park in Hong Kong and still teaches at his own school in Sydney, Australia. He has many schools teaching under his name around the world. If we look at the whole system of Tai Chi, that is all of the movements that one is able to learn, we see that Tai Chi is in actual fact quite a potent martial art of the Chinese internal system. At an advanced stage, one is actually able to defend oneself from external physical attack. But being of the internal Chinese Kung Fu system, there must also be a means whereby we're able to also defend ourselves from internal attack, that is, attack from disease upon the internal organs. What I'll be showing on this video is that part from Tai Chi. It's the part of this martial art where we gain a strong body, a strong mind, and we coordinate the two. We gain balance, coordination, and relaxation. We're able to be calm in all situations. The reason for this is that most diseases nowadays are somewhere along the track related to stress. And Tai Chi treats stress diseases first of all. The way that Tai Chi works to treat one's health is something akin to, to the same way that acupuncture works. Tai Chi tends to treat the root of the cause, whereby stopping the disease from coming back, whereby, whereas acupuncture tends to treat the immediate cause. So sometimes you'll find a Tai Chi person and an acupuncturist working hand in hand. Throughout everyone's body, there are 12 main acupuncture meridians and eight extra ones. These are like vessels through which something flows. This something the Chinese call qi. There's not a direct translation of this word, but it can be likened to life force or internal energy, intrinsic energy, or simply electrical power. It's like fish in water. The fish don't know that they're actually in the water until you take them out, and of course they die. It's the same with us. We don't know that there is qi flowing through our body in the same way that we don't feel our blood flowing through our veins. But take that qi flow away or impede it in some way and we become sick and soon die. The road back to good health is not an easy one and there are many factors contributing to this road back. We can't live, of course, on Tai Chi alone. We have to take into consideration the food we eat, the air we breathe, the water we drink, even the thoughts we think all contribute to one's road back to good health. There's an old Chinese saying, every journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. Tai Chi is that first step. Hello, I'm Earl Montague and this is Tai Chi. To start the basic movements of Tai Chi, you stand with your feet parallel and about shoulder width. Your shoulders must be totally relaxed. In fact, the whole upper part of your body must be totally relaxed. Your tongue 
is just resting on your hard palate, just above your tooth line, just on that little ridge, and you're breathing in and out your nose. When you breathe in, you must breathe in gently but fully to your lower abdomen, so the lower abdomen expands. When you breathe out, the lower abdomen goes in. Every movement in Tai Chi has a yin and a yang part. The yin being the relatively soft movement and the yang being the relatively harder movement. An in-breath is a yin movement and an out-breath is a yang movement. Whenever you raise your hands, it's usually an in-breath. When you take your palms down, it's usually an out-breath. When you extend forward, it's usually an out-breath. When you pull in, it's usually an in-breath. One of the most important aspects of one's Tai Chi training is to try and understand the concept of Sung, that's S-U-N-G. Sung is an, uh, basically an untranslatable Chinese word. A lot of people translate it as being to relax, to totally relax. But of course, if you're totally relaxed, you'd fall on the floor. So, Sung, to me, is trying to do Tai Chi so that you don't feel your wrists moving. For instance, if you have something, a movement like this called waving hands in the clouds. At this point here, that's the danger point. You're going to feel your wrists moving. If you don't have the perfect flow and continuation of movement, at this point, you're going to feel your wrists moving. Now, waving hands in clouds, which you'll learn later on, is the first movement where you'll probably understand Sung, because it's so perfectly rounded. So you wouldn't do it like this. So, although I'll be teaching you like that because that's how you learn the basic building blocks. But later on, you get to do Tai Chi in a t totally flowing manner. The best thing to do is to go back to the introduction, turn off the sound and have a look at me doing the movements to get the idea of what Tai Chi should look like. And that is Sung. If you can come to Sung, then you've understood basically all there is to know about Tai Chi. The elbows should be hanging down. Never raise them like so and keep your shoulders relaxed. Even if you do an up movement like so, or even like this, you don't have to raise your shoulders to do the movement. You keep your shoulders totally relaxed. You, you have yin in your upper body and yang in your lower body. So you have strength when standing, but looseness in your upper body. Whenever your hand goes this way, it's like a feather. The sheer pressure of the wind pushes the tip of the feather downwards. When you go back this way, you drop your wrist below your fingers and the tip of the feather goes back that way on your out breath. And that's how you get into Sung. To start the movements of Tai Chi, you have your hands by your sides, turned inward slightly, very relaxed hands, but slightly yang, so they're slightly flexed. There's always about a fist distance under your arms. There's only one time when you have your arms in like this, and I'll explain that when we come to it. But for the most part, your arms are out to allow the flow of energy or life force or chi or prana to flow around here. Every movement in Tai Chi takes the chi or the life force to a certain organ in your body. The Chinese believe that if you start from the base upwards, then you're going to have a pretty healthy body. So we start with the elimination organs and we heal those organs first and then we work up through the body, through the lungs, the liver, the kidneys, uh, the kidneys first and then up through the mind. So consequently the first movements of Tai Chi relate to the colon and your elimination organs. So we start with the hands by your sides, chin in lightly, not pulled in so that it's tense, just in a little bit, tongue on your hard palate. You breathe in as you totally relax your upper body in a slow and deliberate manner, raise your palms up to about shoulder height, leaving your fingers behind. In breath. Leave your fingers there as your wrists drop down below your fingers and take them straight back down to where they came from in that same arc as you breathe out. Once again, continuing the flow, you t relax your wrists, take them up in front of your body, keeping your left palm away from your body as you come out to the northeast corner. Your wrist, notice the left wrist is in your center at this time. The direction I'm facing is the north. You swing, keep that circle going, swing over to the left, bring your left hand over into the northwest and your right wrist into your center, flexing your left hand slightly. Continuing now, 
you bend your knees, placing the weight onto your left leg, tucking your buttocks under so that you have a vertical backbone. As you take your left hand down, you breathe out. And as your body turns to the northeast corner, you bring your left palm straight underneath your right palm, and the turning of your waist causes your right toes to turn on the heel 45 degrees to the right. Notice how my eyes are still looking out the corner to the front. In Tai Chi, you never turn your head like this. You keep all of your centers in line, and it's your eyes that do the looking for you. So this is one of the few times when your eyes look somewhere else other than where your nose or your coccyx bone is pointing to. From here, you change your weight as you breathe in. Pick up your left heel and step straight down the middle to the north. Now, it's important here not to step across to the right at all, like so, so that you have a skinny stance. You started out with shoulder width, so you have to imagine a line going down here to the north, and you still step on that line just to where your foot will go to naturally. So you stretch your foot out and place it down. You mustn't go and put weight onto your foot. You step forward, holding your breath slightly, place your heel, and as you roll onto it, you turn your hips to the front, breathing out, bring your left hand up in front of you so that the wrist is in perfectly in your center and your right palm is down by your side. At this point, you should feel a slight pulling sensation down the right qua. Qua is a Chinese word which means a bridge, so it's like this little bridge under here. You feel a slight pulling because your buttocks tucked under. If you relax it, all the power is gone from that particular movement. From here, you take your right hand now underneath your left hand and breathe in as you pick up your right heel and turn slightly to the right. You pick up your right foot and place it where it is, facing down towards the east. And as you roll forward onto your right foot, you bring your right hand straight up in front of your left hand and flex your left hand slightly behind your right hand, dragging your right toes toward you. Now notice that I haven't done this with my left rear foot. I haven't pushed it out. Because if you do that, all the power that you're getting from your back leg is lost out the back. So you come forward. I'll just repeat those couple of movements now. Now the back foot comes around because your waist drags it around to the front. From here you turn slightly to the right and turn both palms over. Left hand up, right palm down. You sit back and drop your hands straight down. Now the hands look as if they're moving to the left but they're not. They're actually just dropping. So from this point here you turn your palms over and all you're doing with the hands is this. There's very, very, not very often in Tai Chi when the hands actually go away from your center. They look as if they're going this way and that way, but they're only because of the turning of the body, they come to the side with your hands equidistant over your left thigh. This time the eyes are facing where the hands are going. From here you take your left hand, that's an in-breath, place it across your right wrist and breathe out as you lift your hands straight back to the front in an attacking motion again. Keeping your weight on your front leg, brush lightly the top of your right hand with your left hand, that's a no breath. Sit back onto your back leg, breathing in, and fold your elbows up. This is only one of the only times when you have your elbows actually in, so there's a little bit less than fist under your arm. Drop down very slightly, flex your wrists very gently, and breathe out as you push forward. Now the whole of those, that movement was called grasping swallow's tail, although within them we have pung, double pung, or double board off, loi, or roll backwards, chi, or squeeze forwards, sit back ready, and on, or press forwards. From this position here, you sit back, and let your left hand fall straight across your right, to your right elbow with the wrist in your center. Notice how the hands are still in that position. All you do is hinge them on the elbow like so. So from that push again, whenever you do a pushing movement, you breathe out of a point called laogong or pericardium eight, 
which is a point in the center of your palm where the fist, if you close your fist, your long finger touches a point here called laogong. That's the healing point. That's where the chi or the energy is said to emanate from, either for the martial art or the healing art. So whenever you're doing a pushing mo motion, you make as if you're breathing out of that point and you can actually feel a tingling sensation in your hand. It'll actually go red sometimes. Sit back and breathe in. Now we're doing fishes in eight. You flex both hands lightly backwards, swing out to the left, your left hand is leading, your right toes come around 90 degrees facing the north, and you, as you turn into the northwest corner, your right hand comes over and points into your left elbow. That movement is continued now, that's an out breath, and this is all still the out breath. You swing both hands into your chest, con continuing that circle, and push out with your right hand, the opposite movement of what you've just done, into the northeast corner. That's still your out breath. From here, you turn, you, what you're gonna do here is with your right hand, you're gonna do a, a counterclockwise circle. That's all you're doing with it. It's just gonna go like that. But as we do that, you turn your, as you come up this side, you turn your palm upwards. And as it comes down the other side, you join your fingers together and turn it down the other side and then poke your hand through the hole that you just drew and turn your left palm over until it touches the inside of your elbow. So that movement again from here, all out breath. Breathing in, hook down and push your hand through it. It's important to have a straight arm here. Pick up your left foot, balancing on your right leg and start to swing around to the west. Raise your left wrist, place your left heel down and push with your left palm to the west, making sure you drag your right toes around towards you as you breathe out. The left index finger is in your center, the left elbow is over your left knee, and the right elbow is over the back of your right knee. Straight arm, not like this. Gently drop your hands down, just like you're flapping your wings down, and bring them up like wings, and as you bring them up, you turn your left toes in by 45 degrees and breathe in. Weighted turn. Very few unweighted turns in Tai Chi. Bring your hands down, flexing your wrist slightly in an out breath, and as you lift your hand, your right foot comes off the ground and drops into a heel stance with no weight on it. This movement is called lift hands. The one bit previous to it, this one is called single whip. And that movement acts upon all of the joints of your body or the digestion, depending on which way you do it, as a standing Qi Gong or as a moving exercise. This one is called lift hands and acts upon the liver. You drop your palms downwards slightly and placing just about 10%, there's no weight on this right foot at all in this position, you place about 10% of the weight onto your right heel and push outwards slightly over your right knee. That's, a, that's part of that out breath you just did. Now again, you turn both palms over because you turn to the right slightly, you pull straight down to the left as you breathe in Bring your left hand up onto your right tricep as you take a half step out to the right with your right heel. That's an in-breath. Now you roll forward and push with your shoulder. Your head is turning towards the northwest, but your eyes are looking towards the front on the out-breath. Your right arm is cupped in a, what's called a pung position to protect your groin. From here, that's called cow or shoulder press. You turn your hips to the front, keeping the weight on your front leg, and simply bring your palm up in front and your left hand back. This is the opposite of the beginning movement that we did called Pung. That's part of your out breath. Raise your right hand, keeping it turning with your body above your head, the right hand side of your head, and let it drop into place like so. So that's an in breath, turning to the left, and an out breath as it drops into place. Pick up your left toe and place the ball of your foot with the heel just off the ground in line with your right heel. Turning your hips as much as they can to the front. They can't get right around to the front, but you turn your shoulders to the front. This activates your central nervous system. So this posture works on your central nervous system. It's important to keep your hips this way, slightly to the northwest, but your shoulders are twisted towards the front. Drop your right hand down across your body, turning it over as you're breathing in, and bring your left hand up and over to the northwest corner as you hold a ball. 
continuing those circles, the left hand comes down as you pick up your left knee and brush it with your thumb. Step to the west with your left heel to get a bow stance. Roll forward and flex your palm as you drag your right foot towards you in front. That's called brush knee and twist step. This is called a bow stance. The basic stance is a bow stance. You have your shoulder width stance. You turn right one foot out, place the weight onto it, take a step straight down the middle where your foot will go to naturally and roll forward. The heel stance, which I just did previously, is half shoulder width and the same step with no weight on the heel. The toe stance is no width between your feet and with the shin slightly angular to the ground. So that last movement was called brush knee and twist step. You pick up, you place all the weight onto your left leg, pick up your back foot only about six inches off the ground. Don't pick it up like this. From here on in you keep your body low at the same level apart from a few of the movements, the particular postures. You lift your knee up, you bend your leg up and place it down in exactly the same spot. Don't bring it forward. Drop your palms slightly. Breathe in on the way up, picking your left foot up and placing it in the heel stance again and breathe out as you drop into the posture. Now this is the same posture that the one we just did except it has a different name because it has a different application. It's called playing the guitar or the pipa as it's in Chinese. Turn slightly to the right hand corner as you breathe in, holding the ball again. Brush your left knee, raising your right hand up to about ear height. Step with your left heel and push forward with your right palm. Notice how the palm strikes right at the end. It's not like that's a push. This is a strike. So it comes through and only flexes at the last second. From here, you must keep your weight forward so the movement is always going forward. You turn your foot, left foot out by 45 degrees weighted and hold the ball over on the left, breathing in. Now you repeat that movement that we just did. You brush your right knee this time, step, and as your body comes to the front, you strike with your left palm. No need to drag your left foot around because it's already turned out. Now repeat the same movement, turn your right toes 45 degrees to the right, weighted, holding the ball, brush your left knee as you step through to the west, in breath and out breath as you strike. Pick up your back foot again and repeat, playing the guitar posture, Out breath. In breath as you hold the ball on the right. Brush your left knee again. Step and that's the fifth brush knee twist step. From here you turn your left foot out again 45 degrees to the left. Turn your left palm over and you make a right fist. Bring your fist downward in an arc. And as it comes to your left hand, they both circle upwards to about ear height, breathing in as you step through at 45 degrees, heel in line with heel. Punch downward with the back of your right palm, pulling it in to your right hip, and breathe out. Step forward with your left foot to the west, take a normal bow stance, breathing in, place your foot, roll forward, bring your left palm off your right palm off your hip and do a punch straight to the west. Your left fingers come in so that the knuckles and your fingers are in straight line with your center. The palm comes off, the fist comes off and turns as it comes out. Out breath. Slide your left palm underneath your right elbow and open up your right palm. Elbow on wrist. Turn your left wrist upwards as you breathe in, sit back onto your right leg, turn back to the front, elbows slightly raised, squeeze your elbows in as you push forward and breathe out. Sit back onto your right leg as you turn your palms inward slightly, breathing in, turn your left foot 90 degrees to the right, sit on it. Open your palms as you drag your right foot in parallel to your left foot. Bob down slightly on your left leg as you're breathing out. 
changing your weight as you cross your palms in front of you and raise your palms as you bring, come up to the normal position with the weight on your right leg. The posture that I did earlier on with the fist is called step up, parry and punch. The posture that I just did then is called apparent close up. And that's the, the end of the first third of the Taiji form. From here, turn your left toes in by 45 degrees, keeping the weight on your right leg. Change your weight to it, and as you do that, you hold a ball with your left hand under. Now you're facing into the northeast corner. Now you're going to do a, a movement which is called Embrace Tiger, Return to Mountain, although it's only brush knee twist step, back into the southeast corner. So from here, you pick up your right foot, brush your right knee as it raises, that's your in-breath, step around into the corner, and drag your left toes around 45 degrees. You'll notice that in any corner stance, you'll see that there's a straight line on a cardinal point, north-south or east-west, with my rear toe and my front heel. That's to, so it wouldn't be standing like this. There's no straight line there now. That's, so it has to come around there, straight line. That's how to know when you're in the correct stance in a corner stance. So that's brush knee twist step. From here you repeat um, grasping bird's tail. So you slowly raise your right palm straight up in front of the left one, relaxed. Turn your palms over, left up, right down. Breathe in as you pull down to your left. Attach your left hand across your right wrist. Breathe out as you come back up to the front. Brush the top of your right hand lightly. Sit back on your left leg, breathing in. Breathe out as you push forward. Sit back ready as you breathe in. And do fishes in eight posture. This time you only come around to the north. Pull in and out to the east. From here, you pick up your left foot and step around into the northwest corner, holding your hands in this position, although they do turn with your body. So you pick up your left foot and turn, turn on your right axis, step around into the, right, the right, left hand corner, roll forward and bring your left palm up in line with your right palm in a push into the northwest corner. Now breathe in, that's an out breath. Breathe in as you pick up your right foot, place it down parallel and shoulder width to your left foot, no weight on it yet. That's an in breath. As you place your weight onto your right foot, you make a, a light fist with your right palm, chop it in very shallowly underneath your left elbow and stick your elbow in the little hole that your fist makes and turn to the west, making a left heel stance to the west. Your left finger is under your nose. This has the wonderfully esoteric Chinese name of fist under elbow. You turn your palms upward, nothing breath. Breathe in as you take your palm, right palm down to the rear and out to the northeast corner. Now when your right hand gets to that apex, you must be able to see your palm and your peripheral vision. You're breathing in, you take a step out to the left diagonally with your left foot. Now you sit back on your left foot, pulling your left hand in an arc across your body down to your left hip and bring your right palm forward and strike downwards with your right palm. It's very important here to have that distance between your feet, not like this. It's too unstable. So when you step backwards, you step out to the left slightly with your toe and then bring your left hand in and out and strike downwards with your right palm on the out breath. That's, this is called step back and repulse monkey. Turn your right palm over. You do this five times. Take your left palm out to the southeast corner. Pick up your right foot. Step backwards and out to the right slightly. Bring your left hand forward and your right palm comes in as you breathe out. Turn your left palm over, take your right palm up, you see it, breathing in, stepping out to the left slightly, place your toe and fall backwards onto your left foot 
and repeat repulse monkey. Turn your right palm over, take your left palm upwards, stepping, in breath and out breath. Left palm over, step backwards, breathing in and out. Hold the ball in front with the right hand under as you breathe in. Swing your right heel around into the northeast corner. Now this is a little bit difficult to keep your balance here. You mustn't place your foot. You must swivel on your heels because of the martial application so that your feet, your toes are going to go. They're swiveling on the heels. So you place your heel down, trying to keep your balance on your left leg. You can do this movement a little faster in the beginning just to keep your balance. So from that last movement, you hold the ball, raising your right toes, breathing in. Now all you're going to do with your hands is this. You're keeping your right wrist, in a, it looks as if I'm going to go like that, but this is one of those movements where you're simply raising your palm up and taking your left one back, keeping your right wrist in your center. So it looks like this. Raise your right toe as you breathe in. Swing your right heel around into the northeast corner and swivel on your heels as you breathe out. Your right wrist is in your center. Turn your left toe back, which is facing the north now, to the northwest as you breathe in. Raise your hands like wings, just like before, and repeat the same movement we did before, lift hands. Keeping going exactly the same as before, push out, pull down to your left as you breathe in. Bring your hand up onto your shoulder and do shoulder press just like before with an out breath. Turn to the front exactly in the, as in the first third. Turn to the left, stalk spreads wings this is called. Drop your right palm down and hold the ball over to the right and repeat brush knee twist step. From brush knee twist step, you pick up your back foot again as before, but this time you go into a different movement. You place your right foot back to where it was, relax your right palm and make a left toe stance in line with your left right heel. Now you point your fingers down to the ground as you bend forward at your waist. This is called picking the golden needle from the sea bottom. You bend downwards, keeping your eyes to the front and back, not like this, hunched but straight with no weight on that front toe. Out breath. You stand up again, which lifts your right palm up and you turn it palm down. And as it turns palm down, you take your left foot out to get a good bow stance, roll forward onto it and bring your left fingers up in a poking motion as you drag your right fingers back to your right ear. This is called fan through back. Now the reason that this movement here is called a needle that's picking the golden needle from the sea bottom is because in acupuncture, and Tai Chi is closely related to acupuncture, we have a point just between your big toe and your second toe called liver three. And traditionally in acupuncture, that point for the liver was needled with a golden needle. So hence we're striking to that point. Of course, you'd never do that, but that's what it was originally for. So I'll just repeat that movement again. From here, you go down, come up, rotating your hand to grab a wrist, step out with your left foot, and poke upwards as you breathe out, the fan through back. From here, it's a weighted turn on your left foot, 90 degrees to the right. You make a fist as your fist comes down to your solar plexus, and your left hand comes over your head. That's an in-breath. Your right palm comes up to the back of your left palm, as you turn around to the east, step around and chop down with your right fist as you push forward with your left palm and breathe out. Now you do an uppercut with your right fist, no breath, turn your palms over, pull down to your left in a circle, breathe in as your hands come up to your ear level, pick your right foot up, place it down in front of you at 45 degrees and repeat the movement that we did in the first third called step forward parry and punch. From this point, it's a little different than before in the first third. You slide your left palm underneath your right elbow so that the elbow touches on your right, left wrist. Palms are down. 
you turn your left foot weighted 45 degrees to the left and slide your left palm out to the corner doing a diagonal pung. Bring your right palm straight underneath your left palm as you pick up your right heel breathing in. Step forward with your right heel and roll forward into double pung and we repeat all of grasping bird's tail. Attach your hand across your wrist, squeeze forward, sit back and press forward. From here you keep going just like in the first third, sit back ready, you repeat fishes in eight posture, pull your palms into your chest and push out to the northeast corner, you repeat single whip posture as you breathe in, swing around to the east, stepping and single whip. From here we go into a new posture called waving hands like clouds. A weighted turn on your left heel to the north as you bring your left hand over your head and your right palm comes directly underneath it. The hands are such that the top hand could cut that one in half if necessary. That's an in-breath. Now here we have this movement. Your left hand moves down as your right hand moves up the middle. Now you're going to be doing this movement nine times with nine steps to match it. So every time you do that or that, you're going to be doing a step. Now from here on in, you breathe in on the right and out on the left. So we get from here, single whip, breathe in. Now as you do your first movement, you take your first step and drag it in parallel to your right foot. Notice that my shoulders are still pointing towards the northwest, my hips are to the front. You change your weight to your right leg and simply turn into the northeast corner, keeping your palms in that position. Now you do another hand change and take a double shoulder width step out to the left as you breathe in. Notice there's still no weight on the left leg. Now you turn your body, the feet are parallel to the left, to the northwest corner, and breathe out as you do your palm change and step up to shoulder width. Turn back again. That was the third step. There's your fourth step. Fifth step. Sixth step. Seventh step. Eighth step. And ninth step. From here you turn back as if you're going to do another step, but this time you simply bring your left palm up to the inside of your right elbow, you make your single whip hook downwards and straighten your right arm out and perform single whip again on the other side of that posture. From here, this brings us to halfway through the whole form, we go into the first lot of kicks. You sit back on your right leg and turn both palms as if holding two plates up and breathe in. Now from here you do, this is called lifting the heavens. From here you do high pat on horse. So your left hand is going to come down in an arc, down to your left hip, as your right fingers point past your ear and attack to the front, and you bring your left toe into a toe stand. So three things happen simultaneously. So from here, sit back as you breathe in, pick your left foot straight up, drag it into a toe stance, and breathe out. From here, you take, you do a circle with your, this is all you're going to do. Right hand goes over left elbow, left, el left hand comes under right elbow, and it's like as if you're pulling a bow and arrow back. That's what your hands are going to do. And at the same time, you're going to take a step into the southwest corner. So as you step with your heel, you're breathing in, your right fingers touch the inside of your left elbow. As you place your left toes onto the ground, your left hand touches the underneath side of your right elbow, and as you breathe out, you bring your weight forward and draw the bow and arrow back. From here, you, three things happen, three hand movements happen with three foot movements. The three hand movements are one, two, cross hands, turn your par both palms out and push your palms out into the northwest corner. Your left palm is facing towards the south. With those three hand movements, you have three foot movements. So from that position, on the first hand movement down, you pick up your right heel. 
Then on the second hand movement, as you cross your right palm over your left palm, you pick up your right foot, just so that it's off the ground and parallel your other foot. You turn both palms out and straighten up on your left leg. You must stand straight up, keeping your right, L, right wrist over your right knee and look at, see how the foot is. It's pointing inwards. From here, you kick out with the side of your right foot, the little corner circle and bring it back in as you bob down on your left knee. Turn your pa right palm over, step into the northwest corner as your left hand comes across and touches the inside of your right elbow and repeat drawing the bow into the southwest corner. Now here you repeat the same movement again. You cross hands as you pick your left foot up. Turn your palms out, straighten up, and kick out. That's an in-breath with the kicks. Kicks are always an in-breath. It's, it's a peculiarity of Tai Chi. From here you swing your left foot around and swivel on your right heel so that you come around so that your right foot now has come from a northwest position around to the south. So you end up standing in this position. You can either touch your left toes on the ground just to balance you or keep them off the ground. Now you borrow that momentum of the swing, cross your hands, left over right. It's always left over right for a left kick and right over left for a right kick. You're going to do another kick now, but it's slightly different. You're crossing your hands left over right. It's a left heel kick. So you straighten your right leg up, open your palms up again, same as before, you flex your left foot backwards and thrust your heel forwards as you breathe in. Now, it's important to stand up on your kicking leg. So when you cross your hands, you open your palms up, you stand up on your kicking leg, breathe in, place your left elbow on your left knee and do brush knee twist step down towards the east as you drag your right toe around. From here, you do a left weighted turn and hold the ball on the left and simply repeat the brush knee twist step as you did in the beginning. In breath, out breath. Now we do punch down to knee. So you do, it's much the same as the brush knee twist step. You turn your left, right foot to the right 45 degrees and hold a ball with your left hand, but you don't hold the, hold the ball with your right hand. You make a fist with your right hand and you put it on the outside of your knee, physically, just there. So from that last posture, brush knee, twist step, turn your right toes out and place your fist on your knee, holding a ball with your left hand as you breathe in. Now you keep your fist on your knee as you brush knee, twist, brush your knee as you step through to the east, place your heel, and as you roll forward, you don't punch, but you let your right hand pendulum down and breathe out and punch downwards. It's slightly crouched. From here, you turn your left foot 90 degrees to the right, weighted. Bring your right hand up so the fist is facing palm down, your left hand over. Now, this movement is exactly the same as we did after fan through back. It's that movement. And you're going to repeat those movements again, but in a different direction. So from the punch downwards, you turn your body, bring your fist up, breathing in, fist up to behind your hand, step over to the west, chop down and punch and push with your palm. Do the uppercut, turn your palms, pull down to your left, exactly the same as before. Step through as you breathe in and step forward, parry and punch. From here it's a little different. You slide your left palm underneath your right palm with both palms down, turn your left foot out and you do a diagonal pung to the southwest corner. Now from here you're going to do another right heel kick into the northwest corner. So you scoop your right hand back up, pick your right foot up, turn your palms out and do a right heel kick into the northwest corner. As you place your foot, you turn to the southwest, place your foot down parallel, no weight on it, and point your right thumb to your chest. So you're standing like this. After coming down from the kick with a weight on your left leg, you change the weight to your right leg 
and push both hands down towards the west, bringing your left hand in sort of almost to your right elbow and breathe out. From here, you turn your left palm over and bring your right palm slightly up to about hairline level, breathing in, picking your left heel up. You turn into the southeast corner, step into the southeast corner with your left foot, and as you bring your weight onto your left leg, your left hand sweeps down across your body, comes up in an arc, and the, as the right one comes out in the same arc, only going downwards, and you form two fists and punch up and lower. From here, you turn your left foot 90 degrees to the right, a weighted turn, and simply open your palms, left one out, right one down, and breathe in. Step back into the northwest corner, and now you do the same thing. This is called hitting tiger left and right. You bring your right palm down in an arc as your left palm comes out in an arc, and you do two fists into the corner. Notice how my body has turned slightly. I'm not flat on to the northwest. My body's actually pointing more towards the east with the left right elbow over my right knee. By the same token, when I'm doing it this way, the left elbow is slightly over the left knee, so I'm turned slightly towards the south rather than to the southeast. Now I'll do that movement again so you can see exactly what I'm doing from this position. I've just done the kick out to the northwest corner and I've stood down. You change your weight to your right leg and push down towards the west. Turn your left palm up, pick up your left foot, step into the corner and do two fists. Open your palms, turning your left foot 90 degrees, breathing in. Step back to the opposite corner and do the same movement. Now I'll go back to the proper direction now. From this point, all you have to do now is to simply bring your left hand up in line with your right hand and turn back towards the south. But you do that, you do this movement as you're turning your left foot back towards the south and your right foot follows. So you're going to end up like this, facing the south. So from this movement, you've just come into it, out breath. You breathe in as you turn your left foot back to the south, bring your right, left palm up to your right palm, drag your right. Now as your right toes come around, you open your palms out, cross right over left and do the right heel kick down towards the west. Bring your palms in on top of your right knee, turn palm up, brush either side of your right knee, step back into the northwest corner and do two double punches as your left foot comes around. Turn your right toes 45 degrees to the right as you open your palms and breathe in. Now you're going to do a left heel kick again to the west as you stand up. Now take your left foot and spin around right around 360 degrees on your right ball of your foot. And finish in a back sitting stance facing the west again. It's important here to use your leg as your lever to get you rather than using your body. Your hands just swing around with you. Now you borrow that swinging momentum, cross your palms right over left and you do another right heel kick out into the northwest corner. Place your right elbow on your right knee with a right handed fist. Sink down on your left leg, bringing your right fist up to your left hand. Step down at 45 degrees and finish off with step forward parry and punch. Exactly the same way we finished off the first and first third. Slide your palm under, pull down to your right hip. In breath, out breath. In breath, sit back. Turn your left foot, sit on it, and bob down slightly as you breathe out. Come up on the other side. From here, the beginning is exactly the same as the beginning for the first third. You turn your left foot, hold the ball, brush knee, twist step, or embrace tiger, return to mountain back, 
to the southeast. Raise your right palm up in front of your left palm. Breathe in as you perform the whole of grasping swallow's tail. Breathe out. Sit back. Breathe in. Breathe out. Sit back as you breathe in. Fishes in eight around to the north, then around to the east. Now from here, you simply do single whip, what you would normally do after grasping swallow's tail. The only difference is that you do single whip to the northwest. This is the only time it's performed anywhere else other than to the west. From here, it's a weighted turn on your left foot, 90 degrees to the right, as you hold a ball with the right hand underneath. You step with your right foot into the southeast corner and do slant or diagonal flying. It's the same as at the end of Repulse Monkey when you did parting of horse's mane. You open your palms up and drag your left toe around toward you. The only difference here is when we did parting horse's mane after Repulse Monkey in the second third, you held the ball, you came around, you swivel on your heels like so. That's because that is, it's a strike. Now what you're doing is a throw. And so therefore, you put your foot down first. So you hold the ball with your right hand under, step around into the corner, and then you bring your weight up and turn your waist to throw, breathing out. From here, you turn your right toes weighted 45 degrees to the right to point to the south, and hold, simultaneously hold a ball with the left palm underneath as you breathe in. Now you step with your left foot diagonally into the northwest cor northeast corner and drag your right part foot around 45 degrees as you breathe out. Turn your left foot 45 degrees to the left as you breathe in again. Step into the southeast corner and do the same thing as you drag your left toes around 45 degrees. From here you sit back and block downwards, breathing in left palm underneath your right palm. Turn your right toes 90 degrees to the left, breathing in, sit on it, step to the front with your left foot to the north and perform exactly the same as in the beginning, pung, block, pick up your right foot, place it, double pung, all of grasping swallow's tail. Breathe in, Exactly the same as before. And back around to single whip. Exactly the same as in the first third. And breathe out. From single whip, you do exactly the same turn that you just did on your left foot. The only difference is that you hold your left hand under when you hold the ball. So you turn your foot, left foot weighted 90 degrees to the right and hold the ball as you breathe in with your left hand under. From here, you cross your palms left under right, like so, and as you do that, simultaneously, you pick your right foot up and just turn it where it is, facing down towards the east, the toes. From here, you place your weight onto your right foot and drag your right palm down to your right hip, bring your left palm upwards. You step into the northeast corner with your left foot, and as you roll forward onto it, you turn your left palm out in a blocking motion and strike with your right palm and breathe out. From here, you push down. You do a palm strike to the rear, like that, slowly. And as you do that, you turn your left toes towards your right toes and hold a ball with your right palm under. From here, you do the same thing that you just did. You cross your palms, left hand on top, and the bottom hand's on underneath. As you pick up your right foot, you breathe in. Swing your foot right around into the right-hand corner, the northwest corner, breathing in. Bring your right foot forward and strike with your left palm as you breathe out. Your right palm's over your head. Exactly opposite of what you just did. This time, you push downwards with your left palm, the same thing, but this time it's a little different. You leave your weight on your right leg and turn slightly to the left. Hold the ball, breathing in. 
You cross your palms, left under, pick up your left heel. Drag your right palm down to your hip as you step into the corner with your left heel. Roll forward, turn your left palm out and strike with your right palm. Now here you repeat exactly that big turnaround that you did in the beginning of this, exercise, this, this posture called Fair Lady Works at Shuttles. You strike down with your right palm, turning your left toes around towards your right toes. Hold the ball, cross your palms, drag your left down to your left hip, turn your right palm out and strike into the southeast corner. Now in this movement it's very important to get the timing right. At no time must your palms stop moving. If they stop moving, your timing's out. So if I'll just do it as it should be done, and you'll notice that whenever my right hand is at my right hip, or vice versa, I've taken a step with one foot, and then I roll forward. So that you're never rolling forward like this, and then bring your palm up. The movement forward must be with the power of your changing the weight. So your palm's down here, your left foot step, and then uh, bang. So all the power is behind your changing weight. I just perform that set of postures. From here, you sit back and you repeat exactly what you did after slant flying. You block downwards, left hand under right, turn your right toes 90 degrees, sit back on it. Step forward with your left foot and apply pung. Block, breathing in. Step forward to double pung, dragging your left toes around and repeat exactly the same that you just did when you came out of slant flying. Push out to the right, right hook, and single whip again, back down to the west. Notice the palm, when you use a palm, this is called in Chinese a tile palm hand, which means that the fingers are sort of layered on top of each other. They're not flat like that pushing, they're just relaxed like the little wooden tiles on the on, on roofs. They're layered. So the palm is like this. Not like that. Now from single whip we go into wave hands in clouds. Exactly the same that we did it before. Turn your left foot 90 degrees. and back into single whip. Don't forget to drag your right foot around 45 degrees each time you do a single whip. In single whip, the hips are slightly off center. They're not right around to the front because the single whip stance is slightly larger than the bow stance. So it comes around and you go down a little bit lower and slightly skinnier than the bow stance. So your hips can afford to be a little bit off here, the eyes here, the eyes here, but the head's here, 
and this fingers in your line. Now we practice, and we do the posture known as snake creeps down. There are two ways to do this. There's an easy way and a difficult way. I'll give you the easy way first. The easy way is just in case you can't get that extra long step, which most people can't when you're first learning. If you can only just get sort of a, a, just, a sh just a normal length step, when you're going you're to squat down on your left le right leg now, and the stance, the legs won't be wide enough apart. So what you have to do is to shuffle backwards. So from this movement, you take three shuffles backwards. One, turn your right toes out 90 degrees, turn your heel out 90 degrees, then turn your toes out 90 degrees. And that gives you the, enough stretch to be able to drop straight down on your right leg, turning your left heel out as you drop down, keeping your back straight, and bring your left hand down near your right left knee. It's important to keep this right foot flat on the ground, not up like this, and the left foot flat if you can. It all depends on how far down you go. Now, it doesn't matter if this is a very difficult movement, so don't overstretch yourself. From here, you might just want to go one, two, three, just like that. Now, that's all right. That's getting enough stretch until you can stretch the quire enough to get right down. From here, you bring your left hand out a little bit as you raise up onto your right leg, left leg rather. Drag your right toes right around. It's important to get them around as far as they'll come. Turn your left heel in. Bring your right hand downwards. And now you're going to push up. That's why you brought your toe around so you don't have to drag it. You push up with your right heel onto your left leg. Stand up and place your right elbow on your right knee. The left hand is just by your side. Now from this position, facing the west, we do the opposite position. This is called golden cock stands on one leg. You simply take your right foot down to the rear as your right hand comes down with it, half step backwards, and then pick up your left knee with your left elbow on your left knee, the opposite. Now from here we're going to a whole bunch of repeats. You bring your right palm up, palm upwards, turn your left hand over and repeat repulse monkey. The only difference is you're going into it from the golden cock stands on one leg position. This time you only do three movements. One. Two. Now you keep going from the end of Repulse Monkey, you hold the ball exactly the same as before, step around to the northeast and do Parting Horse's Mane. Now you repeat exactly as you did in the second third, up to but not including the first kick from Repulse Monkey. You only do re three Repulse Monkeys backwards. Stalk spreads wings, hold the ball on the right. There is one slight difference in this set of movements, and we're coming up to it in a second. Pick your foot up, perform picking the golden needle from the ocean bottom. Come back up, breathing in. Step out with your left foot, breathe out as you poke upwards. Now this time it's slightly different. You don't make the right fist. You just keep a flat palm, bring it up to behind your hand. This is called white snake puts out tongue. Keep your palm as you strike with your left palm. Now you make your fist for the uppercut. No breath, breathe in. Then you do step up, parry and punch. Exactly the same as before. Diagonal pung, block to the left, step through, and double pung. Repeat grasping swallow's tail.
single whip. Wave hands like clouds, exactly the same as before. Waving hands in clouds is the only one of the postures whereby you are able to change the amount of times you step. So that if you really want to get back to your starting point, which a lot of people like to, but it's not important, you can change the amount of times. You might only like to step twice to the left or three times to the left instead of doing four times each time. So that's the third step. Fourth step. Single whip to end with. Now you do holding up the heavens exactly the same as before in the second third, just before the kicks. Breathe in. Drop your left hand down in a block and strike with your right palm. Now we do a different movement. Inspection of horse's mouth. This is high pat on horse. Inspection of horse's mouth now. You take a step out with your left heel to the left slightly and slide your left palm out over your right wrist in a jabbing motion as you breathe out. Now you turn to the north. Your left foot turns 90 degrees to the north, weighted as you turn your left palm out and your right palm is underneath your left axilla. Open your palms out and do a right heel kick straight down towards the east. From here, you place your right fist on your right knee, just like before, only from this position. Bring your left hand across as you step down at 45 degrees with your right foot, keeping your right fist on your right knee. And you do the brush knee twist step and the punch down. This time, it's a little higher than before. It's called punch to groin rather than punch to the knee. So it comes up a little higher and the fist slightly turns upwards. From here, you t stand up, slide your left hand under, and turn your left foot 45 degrees to the left, doing diagonal pung just like before. Block to the left as you breathe in. Step through with your right heel and perform grasping bird's tail again. From coming around into single whip, we now perform snake creeps down again, only this time it's slightly different, the hands move slightly differently. You still do the shuffle backwards with your feet, but every time you do a shuffle backwards, one, two, three, there's a different hand movement to do as you go down. So now as you shuffle back with your right toes, you bring your right hand down in an arc, you shuffle back with your right heel, your right hand comes up, and then as you turn your right toes out again, your hand comes up, crossing in front of your left palm. That's a block upwards. Now you turn both hands out, you're actually grabbing a wrist with your right hand and an elbow with your left hand and you pull the person down. Then you make your right hook, bring your left hand down the inside of your left thigh, dig down slightly, bring your hand out, come up, turning your right toes right around, your left, toe, left heel comes in, bring your right palm down and as you push up this time, like so, you make a right fist with palm toward you, so it comes down, and you step up to a right toe stance and turn both fists so that the palms are flat in a blocking type motion. This is called step forward to seven stars. I'll just do that section so it flows in. Now from here you perform riding the tiger back to the mountain. 
So you simply hold a ball with your left hand in front of your right hand as you take a step back with your right foot. And it's much the same movement as stalk spreads wings with a left toe stance. The left hand is slightly more in front this time. From here you bring your left palm up in a circle out to the right. Your right palm comes down to the inside of your left elbow as you turn over to the left. And now you have to do another spin around on your right ball of your foot exactly the same way that we did at the end of the second third after the kick. The only difference is you throw your right hand out over your left hand as you spin around like so and end up with your right hand forward. So you come like this from here. Just do that towards the camera as well to start with. So your hand comes up, your right hand comes down, now you swing over to the left, and then the left hand does a little circle down as you pump your right hand out, giving you the centrifugal force that you need, and finish up in the exact opposite position that, that you started in. So I'll go back and do that in the correct, from step forward to seven stars, you hold the ball, step back and ride the tiger, Bring your left hand up, over to the left, thrust your right palm out and spin around on your right toes. From this point, your weight's on your left leg. You turn your, you keep that movement going slightly over to the northwest corner with your palms. Now, your right foot does a little figure eight here. It spins, it goes down and then across. Now, there's a figure eight, counterclockwise and then clockwise with your foot. I'll do it a little larger, like that. Now the top end of the figure eight is a kick over like this in an arc, and your hands are going to meet it in the middle and slap it. Your right hand slaps there, while your left hand slaps about there, as you do the kick. It's called lotus kick. Turn to the right slightly. You do the little hook down with your right foot. Bring it over to the left. Now you raise your right foot in an arc and slap it. Take it down to where it would go to, normally in that arc, down to the northwest corner, and your hands continue over to the left. As you place your weight onto your right leg, you bring your hands down in an arc, breathing out, across equidistant across your right thigh, right knee. Bring your hands up in two fists and punch. Turn your hips slightly to the right as you punch downwards. This is called shooting the tiger. The little holes made by the fists here are facing each other, like you've sort of got a staff in your hand, so it's a punch downwards with the hammer fist. You open your left palm, roll it over, turn your left foot back 45 degrees, bring your right palm down to your left hand, pick up your right foot, step through, and finish off exactly the same way that we finished off both of the other thirds. In breath, out breath. Now to finish off, you make your weight even. This is the only time that you have even weight in the whole form apart from the very beginning. You drop your palms down to in front of you, raise them as you breathe in, you drop down as far as you can go, keeping your back vertical, and breathe out. As you stand up. <laughs> 